Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to our session today titled Beyond Virtual Icebreakers, Checking in on Hybrid and Remote Teams. Um, we're excited to have uh, some folks that have worked in the trenches with these remote and hybrid teams um, sharing their insights and expertise with us today. Uh, but my name is Brendan Miller. I'm a former AMLAW 100 partner and now an advocate and leader of uh, legal innovation efforts. Um, during and since the pandemic, as have many of you, I'm sure, uh, I've spent significant time leading and participating in remote and hybrid teams. And today we're gonna check in on that. Now that, now that we've gotten, gotten past the pandemic and we've started to see some uh, normalization or at least some, um, some customary practices that include remote and hybrid teams, uh, we wanted to engage some experts to check in on uh, kind of the current status. So that's, uh, that's what we'll be talking about today. Uh, but before we uh, launch into that, um, I wanted to uh, first uh, share with you uh, some basic statistics on uh, how uh, things have changed. So as, as some of you may know, before the pandemic, um, remote work was a lot different than it is today. Uh, the U.S. Uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, shared that, they, they estimated that before the pandemic, it was about 5% of total paid work hours that were associated with telework or remote work. Uh, so if you were to reflect that as a person, uh, you see those the little stick people at the uh, bottom left of this graphic, that would be one in 20 people that, that might be associated with telework in a, in a workforce. Today, obviously, we all know that has changed. Um, and uh, according to some statistics Forbes has, has shared, that has quadrupled. So now it's uh, one in five or five, uh, 20 percent of the workforce that is remote. So that's four in 20 versus one in 20 people that, that are remote. And of note here is that there are significant variations, as we all know, by industry. And frankly, even within, you know, within the industry among different groups, Obviously, there's variation in terms of um, how many are remote for a particular group or, or industry. But overall, it's at about 20%. Um, they also estimate that by 2025, so within months now, uh, about 32.5 million Americans will be working remotely. And it may not surprise you to know that about 98% of workers have reported that they'd like to work at least part of the time uh, in a remote capacity. And also about six, this one surprised me maybe a little bit, uh, about 16% of companies are fully remote today. And I, at least personally, I expect that number will not be going down, if anything, uh, going up. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. So with that, I'd like to bring in uh, our speakers today and, and I'll ask them to introduce uh, themselves and tell us a little bit about their, their role and some of the teams they've worked with that have remote and hybrid team members. Um, so Angelo, you wanna start us off? Sure, Angelo Masucci, I'm Managing Director of the Applications Team here at Paul Hastings. Uh, I, I have a pretty sizable team, it's close to 50 people, um, scattered all across the US. I have even some people overseas. Uh, a lot of my team is actually on the West Coast. So my team is very much hybrid, distributed. <laughs> uh, you know, one comment I, I, I will make is I think you know, and this is the experience of my prior firm as well, is that, you know, since we've been in this sort of hybrid way of working, you know, I personally have seen that in terms of level of collaboration, ability to deliver, be responsive to the business. I, to be frank, I've probably never seen it uh, as good as it's been in recent years in my experience. Um, but yeah, I'll stop there. <laughs> well, well said. Uh, and Ty? Thanks. I'm Ty McDonald. I'm the Chief Knowledge and Innovation Officer for Castles, which is a national um, Canadian firm. And we have three offices across Canada, and I run teams in each of those. And those teams are made up of people that some of them choose to be in the office almost all the time. Some of them are in and out of the office, and some of them work entirely remotely in cities that we don't have offices. So it's a, a real, real mix. And before that, I worked at a firm where I ran teams across eight, 
eight countries in Asia Pacific and uh, 12 offices. So this whole bit about, um, and that was pre-COVID. So working with remotely, whether it's from your home or from a different office, I think is um, something that we've been doing a long time, but the whole like how to, how to make accommodation and, and work together with people that are in their home environment rather than the office environment is something that I think is new to me since COVID and um, has been something that I think has honestly made happier teams. And I think like, you know, half, happier teams, I, I'd like to think are probably the, you know, amongst the most productive. So I, I love where it's going. Yeah, that, that's great. Thank you. And yeah, I, I would I would say you're not venturing out on a limb when you say half your teams are, are probably more productive teams because I think that's probably a universal truth. Um, well, let's let's dive in and start with the uh, the topic of uh, just speaking generally on how you make use of remote teams. And let's start with a, kind of a, a general question about what are the the challenges and opportunities you've seen in working with remote hybrid teams. We've already started to hear some of that in your in introductions, I think. But um, Angelo, you want to start us off again on this question? Yeah, so I mean, as, as, I mean, as far as challenges, right? So I think number one is your, your managers, right? And other people on your team, right? They, they need to be equipped to manage remote teams for one. So I have uh, you know four to five managers in my team. So making sure they're equipped to manage a lot of people working in a hybrid situation is important. Um, you know, also for individuals who are working remotely, not everyone has the same idea. When you say working hybrid, working remote, people think different things. So I think it's really important that, you know, managers, myself, you know, you're setting clear expectations in terms of um, this is, you know, again, this is what's expected. You're working remote in terms of your environment, in terms of, you know, the way you engage with your team members, have a clear expectations and ensure there's consistency. So I think those are some of the challenges that, are, that would be top of mind for me. In terms of opportunities, um, I think Ty touched on a very important thing. If your employees are happy, which most are, because now I think uh, most feel that they have more of a balance and more control in terms of their work responsibilities, being able to manage things that are happening in their personal lives at home. Certainly, I agree, people are generally happier with working, you know, remote, hybrid. Um, I think also in terms of hiring, right, recruiting, uh, I, you know, am finding that I am able, I have access to better talent, right? Uh, previously, I'd worked in a New York-based firm. And so if I was hiring someone, most likely they would be New York based in the office. You know, now I have the ability to, you know, recruit and hire, at, you know, all across the world. You know, uh, I've recently hired a senior manager in, in the UK. I wouldn't have been able to do that before. So in terms of having, you know, being able to recruit the best talent, also there's some people uh, who are specifically looking for, you know, the ability to work remote. So if you're not offering that, it, it certainly creates some challenges. So th those are some things I would, uh, you know, mention to start with. Excellent. Uh, Ty, what about from your perspective? Well, I think I hate to be a broken record, but I'm going to echo a lot of what Angelo just said there. I think, you know, some of the, for me, the um, you know, some of the obvious challenges are to make sure that communication is a little bit more flawless than it might be in an in-person team and setting setting those expectations, et cetera. But also, I, you know, I'm 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 pretty old school. I actually love being in the office quite a bit. Um, and so I've always been, you know, maybe a little bit lazy about my relationships and really relied on those incidental meetings as like an easy way to get to know your team, get to know um, you know the, the culture of the the workplace, the, you know, really develop that culture on your team. And so um so challenge for me personally is like, you know, being really deliberate about developing that team culture and developing um, relationships with the people on my team, because we, I think a tendency in, in the you know, video calls and team meetings when you're working, um, you know, outside of the office is to just get down to business and, you know, take care of the work that needs to be done. And I think, you know, I have to really challenge myself to 
deliberately build time into all of my interactions with people to be to be more social, to get to know people, and to make sure that I know these know people as as people, and um, you know really focus on creating that culture that's going to result in like really excellent collaboration when we're doing online work together. Um, but the benefits, I think, you know that. You can't say enough about the benefits because like like Angelo said, like being able to tend to, to things are, is um, is so helpful. You know, when people have long commutes, they might have like a repairman coming that's only gonna take 10 minutes out of their day, but they would have to take a day off to deal with that in the in the past. And now they're, you know, now we're able to continue to work, you know, smoothly address things that are going on that are unavoidable at home. And um, so I think people are like, you know, generally happier and then in terms of like the benefit to the firm, I think we have much better round the clock coverage because we're able to access people in different time zones and you know cities that we don't necessarily have offices in. We're now able to accommodate um, having people to, to pitch in, you know, in a, in a, in a around the clock way that we didn't have before. And honestly, the talent pool is so much bigger now. You know, being able to leverage people that have chosen to live in smaller cities where we don't have offices has just been tremendous. I, you know, some of my favorite team members are working in in places that that are not um, cities that we would have had a had an office in. Awesome. The I I was just jotting notes of both your speaking. So uh, a few of the things that stood out to me um, that 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 I think are great insights. One is that you both talked about having clear expectations and consistency for what, how the team's gonna operate and kind of what it means to be hybrid versus remote, which I think a lot of firms struggled with that initially in terms of those definitions and, and what it meant. So that's a, a key insight. And, and also Ty, you talked about being deliberate um, in the way you engage with, with team members, which I think is important. And then you both, I heard both, both sides of the, uh, uh, of the observation about talent. Uh, you know, Angela, you talked about how um, there are people that want to work uh, remotely, and so it opens up uh, the possibilities for folks, um, you know, bringing in new talent for whom that is a, an important benefit. And then on the flip side of that, Ty, as you mentioned, that could mean that the firm gets access to talent that they wouldn't have had otherwise. So it, it's, there's, there's both sides of that equation, which I think is really cool. Great, great insights. Let's um, flip now to another question. And Ty, I'll let you start us off on this one. Um, and this is really getting at where have you gotten traction? Where, where have you seen that your approaches are successful with, with your teams? And to the extent that has included using uh, technology, we'd love to hear about that as well. For sure. And I don't think that we're real innovators when it comes to the technology that we're using. I think um, you know, the, the, the basic tools are out there and we just use them a lot. Um, but I think we use them to really develop team culture because that, that's something that's really important to me and in, in my team is that we are all working really well together. And, and to me, that part of that is getting to know each other well. And so we use like video calls for celebrations, for hosting retirement parties, holiday events, um, team lunches, birthdays, et cetera, all of that kind of thing. And um, where, where we're catering in one place, we cater everywhere, including people who are working at home, make sure that they've got a lunch on, on the firm and that they're able to join in and like, you know, share a meal together or things like that. Um, and so we've, we've done things like have trivia sessions about getting to know the team. We um, really try to build in a little bit of time at the beginning of meetings to uh, chit chat about normal life and, and personal life. And we also use, uh, you know, a, a Teams, we're big Microsoft people over here. So we, we also use a Teams channel to, um, as a sort of like a, a chit chat. I think I saw somebody describe this as like a, a, a virtual water cooler. And that's kind of what we use uh, our Teams channel for. We share a lot of like silly memes, um, gifts, personal photos. Well, we also like talk about how we're approaching tasks and like, you know, getting down, getting down to business. Um, and then we use like, Teams to collaborate in real time. So where we've got a document going that we might have, you know, set, all sat in a room together at one point to work on um, to, together. We we all sit down at our at our various desks wherever they are, and I actually happen to be working from home today. <laughs> and we all we can continue to collaborate on these on these uh, projects together. So those are those are the things that I think have been most successful for us is really using these tools not only to get the job done, but to you know to really get to know each other and to you know, um, sort of enhance the way that we work together. 
Great. Uh, Angelo, how about you? Yeah, so I, I definitely agree with the, you know what, what Ty had commented on. We do some of the same stuff. Uh, we use Teams a lot. Um, we, we have I have channels that are set up for, for my, my team. Uh, you know, our CIO at one point, he set up like a kudos channel where, you know, if it, it provides the ability to recognize different people and call out their contributions, uh, which a, a lot of people appreciated. So we do uh, some of the same things with the tools like Teams and Jabber. Um, you know, one thing that I, that I did um, within my team is, you know, I work with my managers to to do things like rethinking onboarding, right? So now that we're a hybrid, we can't onboard people the way we did in the past, right? So how do we approach it in a way so that when someone new joins the firm, we can facilitate or better facilitate them feeling connected to, to, to the firm, to the team, that they don't get lost. Um, and, you know, so that that's also a big part of what we did like within, within my team. Um, you know, communications, as Ty commented on, is really important. So that that's part of it. I think managers need to make sure that they're having regular communications with their team. You know, I also, it's something I, I need to be conscious of because now since I have a bigger team, there's individuals I work very closely with, there's others not as much. So I need to be conscious of the fact that I, I need to take additional steps to communicate out either through department meetings or other means uh, to, again, make sure I'm connecting with, you know, the people right under me and, you know, there's uh, this sharing of information and people feel like they're included. Um, but the onboarding thing, I think, it, it, I feel is important. Uh, kind of related to that, you know, uh, there are also occasions where I will push for people to come in the office. So, for example, if there's something that, you know, myself and other individuals need to brainstorm, you know, I, I personally feel that sometimes being kind of in the office together, or maybe it's offsite somewhere, to kind of get together with those individuals and 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 kind of talk through a brainstorm, whatever it is. I think when you do that, it provides a kind of level of focus that maybe gets lost when people are in their home office on a Zoom call, where there can often be distractions and such like that, uh, stuff like that. So. Those are some things that you know I've done or the department has done that I feel have been effective. Yeah, that that's great. The, uh, the your your mention on onboarding strikes me as just so critical, and you're absolutely right. It's um, can't just do things the way they've always been done when your format and your team structure is different. Um, so I think that's a great insight. And the other that I'll mention is. Um, Ty and, and Angela, you mentioned as well, the uh, sort of that virtual water cooler notion. I know when at my prior firm, when, when we were first rolling out teams, there was almost a reluctance to make use of chat or instant messaging just because it was, it was different than the way folks had communicated previously. But wow, it quickly became a source really for team members to bond and you just never know what an impact it can make when you send that chat after a meeting and just tell someone, hey, you did a great job on that, or that was a great point. It, it can have an impact that you, you don't even realize. So those are great points. Um, and I'm actually, we're, we're gonna roll to the next uh, topic here. And you both mentioned that you both uh, find value in office, uh, whether it's, you know, as Angela, as you were talking about with uh, bringing folks uh, to the office or even off-site to gather together. And uh, Ty, I know you mentioned that that you like being in office. So uh, let's let's talk about that a little bit in terms of you know now that we're in uh, this uh, this reality of of post-COVID, um, how do you see that value of hybrid remote team doing things only remotely versus in office? Um, and it may expand on some of the comments you've already made, but. Uh, Ty, do you want to start us off on that topic? Yeah, for sure. And I think like, the way that the question was originally framed was like, is there still value in, in office um, meetings? And I was like, oh my God, yes. Because I you know, I love people. It's one of the reasons I went into this this kind of uh, industry is I, I, you know, I love working with people. 
Um, and I love the technology and I love the diversity of talent that we get from being able to use technology to bring people in from um, remotely from other locations or working from home. Um, but in my mind, there's really nothing that can take the place of an in-person contact. Um, but I wanted to do a little bit of like research to see if my gut reaction is supported in any way. And Angelo, you're going to be happy to hear that one of the stats that I found was that um, there's a 2022 Stanford business study that said that in-person teams generate 15 to 20 percent more ideas. So I think you're you're dead on the money in saying that if you're doing something like brainstorming, there's a lot of benefit to be had in getting people in a room together. And um, you know, I'm not won't go into like why that might be, but I think it's like a, really something to bear in mind when you're thinking about how to balance that in-person hybrid bit. Because uh, you know, one of the things that we also like to do in our teams is to sort of be consistent about which days we're in the office so that we know when we can connect with people on an in-person um, basis and when we might want to set meetings for things like brainstorming activities or things that are most effectively done as a group. Um, and I think, I was also heartened by this Harvard Business Study review, which said that 90% of people still think face-to-face -face meetings are key to a successful long-term working relations. And you know, I think just the fact that there are so many people that think that makes it true. Like you have to, you have to, you know, have make some time to be face-to-face -face where it's possible. You know, it's not always possible, but where it is, I think that's a really important thing to do. And I think um, you know, those spontaneous interactions, they still generate a lot of um, project work for my team. So you run into people or you know, a partner or something in the, in the office, they've got an idea that they might not necessarily think to set up a meeting to talk to you about, but they'll tell you about it in the hallway. So it's really important, I think, to be there. Um, I had something else that I was going to say that has just slipped my mind now. Uh, so I'm going to, I'll, I'll turn that over to Angelo then. Great. Yeah, I I completely agree with everything Ty said. And, you know, the other thing I'll add is, you know, certainly I think one thing that's lost with uh, remote work is that, you know, when you're in the office, there's conversations, interactions that happen organically that don't happen, right? If you're remote and you're engaging with people in the context of a specific project or whatever it might be. So I, I am a, a firm believer in, in kind of in having face-to-face conversations and having those opportunities. And as I mentioned earlier, again, for onboarding, uh, I have, for for example, uh, two new people starting. They're in the office. They're able to work together you know, with each other, collaborate together. I'm there. There's other people they have the opportunity to meet. It's a way to ensure that they're meeting people, building relationships, and getting acclimated to the firm. Uh, I'll also say that I think for people who are in leadership roles, right, so senior you know, manager, senior manager, director, you know, I, I'm old school in the sense, I feel that if you're in one of those roles, you should have a presence in the office. Um, you know, for example, soon we're gonna have our fall associates coming in and they're gonna be here, right? The, the, the lawyers are gonna be here. And for me on the operational side of the firm, there should be good, the right sort of representation, right? Um, so yeah, I'm a firm believer that, you know, your leadership role, you should have some presence in the office. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think those are the, those are kind of my key thoughts there. Yeah. That, great thoughts. The, um, you know, as, as you both were speaking, I, I had, had thought of a, we, my, I have two daughters and within our family, uh, they both would be able to quote that I'm, uh, I tend to, to throw out the, the, the phrase that why are we saying either or when it can be both and now. Admittedly, usually when I'm using that, it's because I'm trying to avoid making a decision. But regardless, I think the point still stands that in here, that there's value in both, right? The in-office and the remote hybrid. It's about maximizing that. And, you know, they, they both can feed one another if, if, uh, if, if uh, attention is, is given to both. Um, so great, great examples of that. Okay, well, we're, we're uh, going to bring this home a little bit. So I'd like to... Um, end with uh, kind of a open-ended question um and we'll angelo maybe i'll start with you on this one again um what are your top takeaways could be things we've already talked about or things that we haven't had a chance to to mention but when it comes to um helping remote or hybrid teams uh to be effective and, and to stay engaged and connected um what are what are some top takeaway or takeaways that come to mind for you 
So, you know, I'll mention a couple of things I touched on before. So I think make sure your managers are equipped, right, and, and, and able to, to manage their teams and that make sure that you're communicating expectations for working remote. Because, again, uh, it's not going to be the same for, for everyone. Um, the other thing I, I would say is one of the benefits that people will cite working from home is, hey, I, I have a better – you know, work-life balance, right? Able to manage things in my personal life more easily. I think along with that, some people might say that your kind of work life is, for many of us, bleeds more into our personal life. We're working, it feels like we're working longer hours, we're at our desks longer. And sometimes people get stressed out, right? And sometimes they, they say it, but sometimes they don't. And I think you got to look for the signs where maybe someone is, you know, feeling a little burned out, you need a break and you need to engage with them um, and find a way to, you know, at least in the moment, get a break, have more of a balance, step away if they need to. Because I do think in some ways uh, the, the, you know, working remote can, can create some challenges. Also, I think, you know, along with that, some people may not be equipped, right, to, to work at home. They may not have the environment to do that. So again, your managers should be able to kind of look for signs where maybe there's a challenge there and be and be ready to engage with people and find a way to to kind of help them address those things. So, yeah, those are some of the things, along with finding opportunities to to collaborate in person would be the main things I would highlight. Perfect. Good insights. Uh, and then, hi, how about you? I'll give you a chance to speak to this as well. It's hard to think of more to add to what Angela has said because I, you know, I heartily agree with everything that um, that he has said. I, I, I guess I would just go back to the also like making that time to get to know people because I think that's where I've experienced the most effective working relationships with um, with people on my team or with um, with my own supervisors is where I have that a bit of a personal relationship as well. So. And it does take a more, I think, determined effort when you're doing everything remotely. So I, I would just really encourage people to make more time for that. Um, and I guess the other thing that I would say is that it having a successful hybrid working relationship or relationship with a firm or with a with a team, it the manager has a lot to you know a big role to play on that. But it's also I would give advice to the people that are on the team and that you know you have to put some effort into it as well. You know, getting to to know people, I have a somebody on one of my teams that works in a, a city that we don't have an office, and she she puts so much effort into getting to know everybody and to being like a you know a, a member of the team that most people don't even remember that they haven't met her in person. And I think that that's a really great example of like how to integrate yourself as well. It's not you can't just rely on the on the firm or the or the leader to integrate you. It's a it's definitely a two way street. Um, so yeah, I would also just schedule some social events. Uh, you know, don't don't make everything about work. You know, it, we you know we're all in, we're all in the business to make money and to like to, to make our firms do better. But I think we also you know there's so there's so much value when you've got people that you don't ever see in person to taking a little bit of time for for the social side as well. That's great. The um, you know I, I think actually that was a, a great summation at least in my mind. Because remote hybrid teams, as we've talked about, and as you both have shared, there's some real opportunity to leverage people even differently than we have before and to help them achieve their best um, when it's done in concert with appropriate and deliberate and plans in office opportunities um, that can really work well. But tie particularly to the, the point you were making towards the end there. It's incumbent on leaders that are leading these teams, but also members of those teams that are engaged and participating in those teams to continue to make the, the best of that um, environment and to uh, you know, get the most out of that, that teamwork and, and the way it's done. So great, great insights. With that, um, we're, we're wrapping up our session, but I wanna first thank Angelo and Ty for your time and um, thoughts and insights and observations. Appreciate it. Uh, remote hybrid teams is a journey, but I think we're all at this point convinced it's not a journey that's going away. It's only going to evolve and, and grow. And so I uh, appreciate Angelo and Ty, you're sharing uh, kind of where you're at with your teams at this point in time. And we'll look forward to uh, ways to connect again in the future.
Um, I also want to thank our participants, those of you who uh, joined in this session uh, today. Hopefully, you've gotten some uh, some tidbits and some takeaways that you can take back to your teams. And we wish you success in, in leading your remote and hybrid teams and uh, wish you all the best. I have uh, put up on, on this last slide um, email addresses, so feel free to reach out to any of us if you've got uh, thoughts or would like to touch base on uh, your remote hybrid work. And we wish you the best. Uh, have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.